it goes without saying that thus far in 2020 has certainly been a year for the ages. Suffice to say, I hope you're all home, doing well and staying safe. This is my first time uh, presenting GMB Minerals at the MIF, virtual or otherwise. I certainly want to thank the organizers for modifying the MIF format so we can all be here today. I think this is brilliant. This happens to be our normal disclaimer. Uh, because I am relying on forward-looking statements, I would really appreciate it if people took a moment to familiarize yourselves with it. Okay, starting out with a few details on the capital structure of the company. We trade on the TMX, uh, TSX venture under the symbol GMV. We have 54 million shares issued. We have approximately 400 shareholders seven of whom are very large shareholders that own between three and five million shares each. We have approximately a million dollars in the treasury. We've also been careful to trim our overheads given the current environment structure. Management and board advisors currently own about 12 million shares. We have 14 million warrants and if exercised, we'll put about 2.3 million into the treasury. So our company is entirely focused on the Mexican hat gold deposit in Southeast Arizona. The hat is a low sulfidation, structurally controlled epithermal gold target. Ours is not the kind of super high grade project that many people look for. So sometimes or often we get accused of being a little bit boring, right Eric? <laughs> but boring is okay as we evolve as a viable low cost gold project, firmly situated in a safe jurisdiction. And as you'll agree, it's just about what we recover anyway that's important. We're located 72 miles southeast of uh, Tucson. As I'm sure everyone knows, Arizona is a very safe and friendly mining state. The southeast quadrant of the state is certainly no exception. The area is sparsely populated, cattle outnumber people by a wide margin. We're situated alongside a well-maintained country road with power lines. And in fact, we have a power plant that's only about 13 miles to the north of us. Access to water has not been an issue. The area is very familiar with mining as the Commonwealth gold and silver mine is just up the road. A few details about the company. The Mexican hat was discovered by a prospector named Manuel Hernandez, who sadly passed away in 2019. The property has been previously held and worked on by Placer Dome in the early 1990s. Placer's geos recommended that the project continue, but head office had other plans. Over a number of years, differing companies have held fractional ownership of the area, but only under GMV have we been, been able to assemble all of the land, approximately 5,000 acres that now make up the Mexican Hat Project. We have a 100% interest in the property that has seen approximately, or specifically, 203 holes drilled to date. We've drilled to find a resource that's open in at least three directions, and we have completed an initial preliminary economic assessment. In late 2018, we engaged Tetra Tech and DRW geological consultants to co-author our resource calculation, which was 651,000 inferred ounces at 0.616 grams of gold per ton. So a little bit more on the geological makeup of the property itself. We have 48 claims comprised of state, private, and BLM land. The deposit is 33 miles north of the Mexican border. The Mexican hat, as I say, is a low sulfidation alkaline epithermal gold deposit in tertiary rock. Similar deposits of similar age within the Basin and Range Province in Nevada, such as Round Mountain and Midas, host many millions of ounces of gold. A northeast dipping, Listric Normal Fault, and multiple high angle structures in the hanging wall of that fault host all of our mineralization. Gold is associated with moderate to strong oxidized zones of hematite and limonite. On this property, if it's red and fractured, it runs. So despite the hot and cold nature of 
exploration financing over the last number of years, we've accomplished a lot of work on this property. We've done lots of surface mapping, collection of thousands of soil geochemistry samples, an aerial DEM and photogrammetric survey, completion of 86 line kilometers of uh, ground magnetics, three lines of audio mag geophysics, three gravity profiles, and about 15,000 meters of drilling. We've also focused an awful lot on metallurgy, which is of paramount importance to any mining operation, but perhaps even more so for any heap leach operation. Thankfully, we've been very fortunate to have some terrific results. We've also been very fortunate to work with John Fox, a well-known and respected professional engineer who's an expert in this field. Two column leach tests have been completed in addition to numerous bottle roll tests with recoveries up to 95%. By design, the larger column test rated very low six inch material. This yielded almost 60% recovery and was strongly impacted by size. Further analysis of one inch material yielded gold recoveries well in advance of 90%. That was a great result. The material tested was hard, competent rock and would present no problem in constructing a crushed rock heap leach without the need for agglomeration. We will use conventional, well-proven leach and carbon technology. Nothing new, nothing unique. So while the Mexican hat assumes an open pit scenario that can be suited to run of mine, we know a coarse crush certainly improves the project's economics. Heap leach projects are well known and have a number of benefits. Among them, a low capital cost, fast payback, and relatively simple setup and operation. Thanks go out to Joe Mazumdar for this slide, which we had the uh, uh, gall, if you will, to insert the Mexican hat deposit to it to slightly modify it. As you can see, the average gold recovered grades of selected heap leach gold mines averaged only 0.53 grams of ton per, gold, per ton. So no, no need to be really afraid of a low grade deposit. You can see GMV's deposit is firmly situated in the top 20% of those. And this is primarily because of our excellent recoveries. Incidentally, unless I'm mistaken, I think all six of those projects to the right of ours have subsequently been uh, acquired. So this brings us to our PEA we received in early 2019. IMC and M3 were contracted, are well-known consultants and certainly well-regarded for the work that they do. To summarize their 200-page document, it was determined that a mining project would be a two-stage open circuit stacked at approximately 15,000 tons of throughput using a conventional heap leach pad. Current mine life of five years, but open to expansion. Life of mine head grade of 0.66 grams ton. Low strip ratio of 2.8, an IRR of better than 33% and a payback over two years using only $1,300 gold as a base. Amount of gold recovered, they pegged at 470,000 ounces. Average annual gold production at 94,000 ounces. Life of mine direct operating cost of 658 an ounce of gold recovered an all-in sustaining cost of 764 of gold recovered. Overall, not a bad place to be. However, we felt the capex, as Eric said, was too high and the mine life would not lend itself well to conventional financing methods. So we're now updating our mineral resource. At this moment, our 2019 program saw 11 holes complete within the model pit where mineral zones were open for expansion. These gap areas were previously undrilled and therefore classified as waste. All drill holes in our 2019 program intersected mineralization greater than our cutoff, except for one. For example, hole 1901 was located 60 meters beyond the defined resource blocks and will therefore add mineralization to zone number eight. Similarly, 1902 and 1905 also extended mineralization in zones five and four respectively, all within the original model PEA pit. The new resource is in its final stages and we expect to re receive it very, very soon. 
So moving ahead, we've engaged uh, Denver-based Samuel Engineering to act as project lead in order to take a new look with fresh eyes and a fresh approach. They're teaming up with Golder and Associates, Respect, and Tierra Group International to deliver an updated PEA to us in about three and a half months from now. While the rules limit what can be said about the economics at this stage, we will have a revised resource going into this study, incorporating the 11 holes that I've referenced. But it is anticipated that the project will utilize a two-stage crushing circuit with no agglomeration, a mining throughput sized to produce approximately 60,000 ounces a year over an eight-year mine life. This will be based on known gold resources and not relying on any future drilling. It's further expected that the CAPEX will be greatly reduced as compared to the 2019 PEA. And also as the price of gold has recently broken out, we're certainly anticipating and hoping a higher base case will be used, which will be helpful for, you know, for everyone. So the next steps, whoops. My mouse has got a life of its own. The next steps are uh, to revise the resource calculation, which we do very, very soon, update the preliminary economic assessment, to drill at the Mexican hat in order to convert the inferred resource to a largely measured and indicated category, and test a zone to the south called the little hat, which is a highly prospective target we think could be very much uh, a, a difference maker for us. So in summary, GMV's asset is located in a safe, developed and mining friendly state with infrastructure all around. We have a very low market capitalization of approximately 6 million Canadian dollars. We have a project that has proven to be superb on a metallurgical standpoint and lends itself well to an open pit style heat leach system. We have a new resource and a new PEA coming, which we think is gonna change the playing field for the company going forward. Thank you very much for your time.